Ma we put What time is it? Daytime. Where's everybody else? They bailed on us. Oh, come on. My old man used to bring us up here. Said a mean old troll lived in the caves. They've been out there for weeks. Something in there. In the corner. It's like a person. What, with the beady eyes of a cave troll? Do you see it? Yeah. It's just some bin bags. Good morning, Mum. Who's this? Do you know this place? Lover's Corner. Local uniform says it's a hangout for bored teenagers who come up here to party. Well, they've got to go somewhere, I suppose. These are the two lads who found him. Yeah, that's Richard Wemby and Matthew Lansard. And were they up here partying? Yeah. The state of this. More DNA here than Friday night or big markers. I see one male, late teens, early twenties, Ma. No ID. No phone? No phone, no wallet. Well, and he was dumped. Wrapped up in bin bags. Seal tight, just like a mummy. The cold in the cave slowed decomposition. But judging from the discoloration around the head and the neck here, estimated time of death sometime Tuesday morning. So two days. He looks about the same age as those lads who found him. Is he one of their mates? You say they don't know him. What have you got cause of death? Blunt force trauma to the cranium. Two fractures. One on the crown, not so deep. Another deeper at the back of the skull. So hit twice over the head? From behind. Also, it's a minor fracture on the bridge of the nose. Is that from being punched or fallen face first? I mean, there's dirt around the nose and mouth, so... Probably the latter, unless there's any other signs of a struggle. There's some older cuts and scratches on his hands, but...
Why hasn't any wildlife been at him? He was wrapped up airtight until the lads came and opened him up. But whoever left him is stuck him right over there in the corner where nothing picked up his scent. Yeah, well, that's something, I suppose. Hmm. Now, there's dirt on the back of his car, so probably dragged up here if we check the area. First officers on the scene walked it. There are no obvious drag marks or footprints. Ah, the poor lad. Marcus? Hmm? What's that? Maybe he was wearing it. Broke off when he was killed. Or maybe the killer was wearing it. Or maybe the killer left it on him. Mom, can I show you something? Uh, Mom, just wanted to say that I thought you did really well yesterday at Bethany's inquest. I imagine, I imagine it was difficult. Well, no, well, we did our homework. It was fine. Thanks, Marcus. So not dumped here. Killed here. Let's get this sealed off. Huh? Oh. There's some loose topsoil. Dig it. I know. Maybe they got disturbed. Yeah, maybe. Marcus said last Tuesday. Now, last Tuesday was cold, wasn't it? Frost. The ground would have been too hot to dig, and if you needed to hide a body, that cave is as good a place as any. Premeditated, then? Mm. Oh, well, if the killer had been bags and duct tape with him. Well... Could have left the body there, went back to the car, or nipped the B&Q. Hello, lads. DCI Vera Stanhope. Now, you told my officer you stayed up here last night. Yeah. On your own? On our own. Where'd you live? Collington. Collington? Well, that's a fair few miles. How'd you get up here? We met Colin. <laughs> they're taking photos of the tire tracks, Rich. They'll find out. So what, you up here partying, were you? Partying? Mm. No. It was just a few mates, a few drinks. Mm. Now, that lad in the cave, I know you took a peek. Are you sure you don't know him? No, don't know him. Right. Well, I'm going to need the names of your drinking buddies. Okay. Can we get a lift back to town after? Oh, you reckon they're involved? Well, if they are, they'd be pretty stupid to call it in. We have a white male, late teens to early 20s. He suffered a blunt force trauma to the back of the head. He was found wrapped in bin bags in a cave up at Lover's Corner. Now, maybe they planned to bury him, but the ground was too hard. Don't know. And he was found with a crucifix on him. Where are we with ID? Ah, uh, he's not in the system. Missing persons came back empty. Right, well, check schools and colleges too. Any absentees in the last two days? Will do. And what about the list of teens up at Lover's Corner? We're having trouble tracking them all down. It's a long list and the ones we've spoken to, well, they're not volunteering much. Why not? Well, words out, there's a killer on the loose. Don't tell me, bloody social media. Yeah, uh, hashtag caveman. Now, which one of the little tow rags put that up? Yeah, Matt. Matt. Uh, do you want me to get on the sideband and get it deleted? Ah, be like fighting a bushfire. Just keep your eye on us. So can we place anyone at the scene? Any call-outs in the last week? Disturbances? Complaints from locals? Anything? There's nobody about to complain. It's in the middle of nowhere. Well, we've got no CCTV to look at. Great. Well, the nearest car was a quarter of a mile down the road at the garage. Uh, Ma, Marcus just sent these over. He said he found them in the front pocket of the victim's jeans. Looks like confetti. Get onto the disgruntled brides, Kenny. Your area. 
I've actually got a lot on. Oh, right, Ken. What time you called? Oh, well, they're saying three o'clock, but the clerk thinks that it might run on. Well, can we get in some cover? Well, no, I'd rather wait until Bethany's inquest is over. Why? Because the time it takes to get a new person up to speed will have solved it. So we carry on a man down? Just as normal? Exactly, Kenny. Exactly. This isn't confetti. I think it's ticket stubs. Oh, cinema ticket stubs. No, all e-tickets, now. We've got uns. Uns. Eve. Eve and Eve. And and Steve. Yeah. Pev. Pevens. Pevens. Pevensy. Pevensy. What's that? Pevensy. The fair's in town. Tonight, it's, in it's not the Pevensey Fair, I remember. We'll have you down as a thrill seeker. Uh, of course, it was the Pevensey Steam Fair back then. Oh, yeah, is that before we had electricity? Go and check those caravans, see if they recognise our lad. I'll see if I can find the manager. They talk to this way, aren't you? Is there a manager pet or someone in charge? Hello? You're right. Jodie Pevensey. Oh. My my parents own the affair. Right. Well, what seems to be the problem? Uh, do you recognise this lad at all? Maybe he works for you? Why, um, why, why is that drawing? Is he wanted for some art? You do know him, then. Is he in trouble? He was found dead this morning, love. His name's Jamie. At least that's what he called himself. You don't know his surname. Do you know where he's found? Mm, up at Lover's Corner. Do you know it? Never heard of it. And we've reason to believe he was murdered. And he worked for you? Aye, since last summer. Does he have a next of kin? Sorry, I don't know. Well, is there anything at all you can tell me? He was a good worker, always prompt. Was he a local lad? Aye, Jody. So do you have an address? Just stayed here. When did you last see him? Must have been Monday night. Packed his bags and moved on. He left? Do you know where he went? What happened to you? Well, it's all the fun of the fair. Mr. Kurt was very kindly showing me how he treats outsiders, weren't you? I thought you were nicking stuff. Is it possible he could have had a disagreement with any of the other travellers? We're not travellers, we're show people. This has been my family business for four generations. Nothing happens here without me knowing about it. And no, Jimmy got on with everyone. Well, clearly not everyone. Could you show me where he was staying? Is this one? Keeping here, do you? Yeah, that was Jamie's bed. Did he tell you he was leaving? Jamie's a quiet fella. Always the quiet ones. It didn't seem like he was in any trouble. He didn't mention anything. Do you have any visitors? 
Girlfriend? Boyfriend? No. Miss Jamie's? That's mine. It's just around the corner. Right. I want the place searched. got you a more accurate time of death, 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. Tuesday morning. So a morning person, our killer. And I found something in the wound, a fleck of black paint. I've sent it off for analysis. However, the skull fractures are concave. So something angled and heavy and black. First blow knocked him out, fell onto his knees, landed face down. There was dirt in the airway, so he was still alive. And the second blow... That finished him off. So deliberate. Exactly. What about that black plastic? Anything on that? Just dirt. Any blood other than his? Not in the cave or near it. Oh, let's think. He goes up there, have a few drinks with his mates, fight breaks out, and someone lamps him one. There's no alcohol in the blood. Plus, he had fairly severe diabetes. Which type? One. But having said that, overall, physically... He was in really good shape. No nicotine, no drugs. There's nice togs. He's healthy. He's well-groomed. So what's a clean-living, Bible-reading lad doing in an area notorious for bad behaviour? Hmm. Looking to be corrupted? It's also time for your friends and family. but you'll be surrounded by familiar faces. Be surprised how much that helps. Yes. I'll be there to walk you through everything. Ken is back in the office. He said they overran last night. You know, Bethany's mum was there. Not in a good way, apparently. Oh, well, it's over now. Hey, this will be you soon, walking down the aisle. Ooh. His name is Jamie Thorne. Are you sure? Yes, yes. So was he a member of your church? So how do you know him, then? He stayed with us last year. He stayed in our spare room. He stayed with you? Last December. I found him sleeping rough in a doorway to the church, so I offered him a place to stay. Well, we thought he was staying at the fairground. He had clothes for the winter. So how long was he with you? Till it started up again, mid-January. Have you seen him since? Did you know him before? No, but he used to live in town. He spoke of his mother still being here. Oh, do you have an address, love? Jamie grew up in one of those terraces on Tanner Street, but his mother remarried. She's still in Callington, though. Grace, Grace Blash. That's great, thank you. I'll phone it in. <laughs> if his mum's still local, you'd think she'd take him in at Christmas. Jamie's father died. It was just him and his mum for a long time. I gather it was tough for them. A single mum, not a lot of money. When Jamie's mum remarried, they moved. Jamie spoke very fondly of his mother and his half-brother and sister. It's strange that then, feeling he couldn't go back. Jamie said it wasn't really an option. We 
we found this Bible in the caravan he was staying in at the fairground. Was he religious at all? No, we stayed with us. We discussed spiritual matters. Do you take many young lads in? No. I've tried to help a few over the years, though Jamie was the only one that listened. Mm. And he never kept in touch. George! This is the first I've heard of him since he left us. Mia said the police are called. What's going on? It's my wife, Amber. Were you handing out flyers at the fairground last night? Uh, we go to most of the events around here, yeah? Try and drum up some trade. Do you ever happen to see Jamie Thorne at the fairground? Jamie? Oh, mm -hmm. no. Why? I'll leave you to explain. Thanks. Excuse me, love. So have you and the been in touch with the mother? Yeah, she lives in one of those new builds on Carrington Drive. Husband's big in construction. Oh, married well, then. Well, let's get her in for a formal identification. What, immediately? Well, might she not want to call someone or get her head round, eh? Oh, most people prefer to just get on with it, don't they? You know, I would. Mrs. Marsh, are you ready? some questions about Jamie. Well, can't it wait? No, unfortunately, it can't. Grace. It's okay. Did you and Jamie keep in touch? Of course. We, we text now and then. I spoke to him about a month ago. And when did he leave home? July last year. Why did he leave? He got a job. Oh, so there were no problems at home, anything I should know about? No, of course not. Mm, wasn't in any trouble that you know of? No. Look, I'm sorry, I have to ask, where were the both of you Tuesday morning? I was at work. Grace was home with the kids. Was this Jamie's? He wasn't religious. So do you know why he stayed with the Reverend Halford over Christmas? Church just down the road from you. We thought he was at the fairground. Oh, I thought you kept in touch. Yeah, we did. It's just, you know, the church is, what, half a mile from your home and he didn't even call in to see you. Not even for Christmas dinner. We better get home. My mother's looking after the kids. They'll be running her ragged. Fairground shows up on the PNC, all drug-related offences, dealing, possession. Well, Jamie wasn't a user, but he could have been involved in dealing. 
And it says, uh, and Mr. Kirk subdued the assailant until the police arrived. Kirk? Is that Harris Kirk? Uh-huh. Well, he had a go at you, didn't he, Aidan? He tried. <laughs> Yeah, why couldn't Jamie stay at the fairground over Christmas? Because according to the vicar, it closes. Yep, come winter, they pack up all the rides, store them in an old bus depot, and Gateshead and go home. The Pevensies have a house near there. According to Jamie's bank account, he made a handful of cash withdrawals, an average one a week, different days, different amounts. But the last one was at 10.07 on Tuesday morning, £200. He didn't have any cash on him. What bank is this? Private ATM machine at a snooker hall in Callington. So what was Jamie doing there? Check it out. Do the board. According to his bank records, he withdrew £200 from this machine just after 10 Tuesday morning. I don't know. Maybe. Well, could he have been in here with someone? I don't know. What about you, mate? You might know something. We're usually quiet in here weekdays. Police. All right, mate. All right. Just wondered if you'd seen this light in here Tuesday morning. No, mm, sorry. Have another look. Maybe you shot a few frames with him. A quick 200 quid. Don't know what you're talking about. That's CCTV on the front doors. Any chance I could have a look? Suppose. Is there another entrance? Yeah. At the back. On the car park. Yeah. Maybe you used that? Does it have CCTV? Oh, have you definitely got the right day? Tuesday morning. Hey, hang on, hang on. Back up a bit. A bit more. And stop. pretty tight knit. I tried my best. Well, it sounds like you didn't get on. Look, the lad never took to me. I tried to include him in things we did, you know, as a family. He wasn't interested. Grace told him he didn't need to do it. Mums and their sons, eh? <laughs> now, your secretary told us you wasn't in the office Tuesday morning, so where were you? I was here. Presumably somebody here can verify that. The foreman, he'll back me up. Back you up? Oh, you two got an arrangement then, have you? When you're off playing snooker, he tells everyone you're here. Mm. Only your doppelganger was in corner and snooker all Tuesday morning. Well, pops out for a few frames. Left work for a few frames. That's snooker, worse than drugs. Did you meet anyone there? Some mates that I play with, it's hardly a crime, is it? No, love. But you told us you were at work, so you can see why we were a bit confused. I didn't think it was important. What about Jamie? Did you meet Jamie there? No. Just that Jamie withdrew £200 from a cash point in a snooker hall on Tuesday morning. Bit of a coincidence, that, don't you think? Him being there and all. And after that, we've got no trace of him until he turns up in a bin bag. Look, me and Jamie might not have been mates, but it's not like that. Huh? Look, I haven't seen or spoken to him for months. Haven't you? Well, have a look at this. This is a list of calls from Jamie's mobile. He called you six times, four times Monday evening and twice on Tuesday morning. I don't know anything about this. No? And he left you a voicemail, which you deleted, so I'll ask you again. Did you meet Jamie on Tuesday at the snooker hall? Look, he wasn't there. It's an old savings account that Grace set up for him. He never used it. I meant to close it, but I didn't. You withdrew the money? Yes, look, it's my money. Why? To cover his gambling habit from his missus, am I right? This is the phone that Grace uses. I just pay the bloody bill. Can I get you a 
get you a coffee. No, thanks. No, there's been a few developments we'd like to ask you about. Now, you said uh, Jamie hadn't been in touch recently. Yeah. Only, according to this, he called you six times in two days. Just, just had some missed calls. Yes, which you just failed to mention. I forgot. You forgot. Oh, she forgot. Only on one of those calls, Jamie left a voicemail. I never received that. Yes, you did, because yesterday you erased it. But luckily, we've managed to retrieve it from the server. Do you want to hear it? It's me. Can you call me back? I need to speak with you. I'm in a bit of trouble. I could do with somewhere to stay. Call me when you can. Now, Jamie left that voicemail at 8.32 a.m. Tuesday morning, the day he was killed. And according to the phone company, you played it at 8.36 a.m. And then yesterday, you erased it. Why'd you do that? What trouble was Jamie in? I don't know. But whatever it was, I didn't want him bringing it here. But why did you erase it? I didn't think he was being serious. I thought he was messing. Well, it doesn't sound like he's messing to me, love, does it? You, dear Seely? Well, no. He packed his bags Tuesday morning. Did he turn up on your doorstep? Didn't you go to the fairground? No. No. Because you turned your back on him. Oh. I know. I know. So, uh, where's Jamie's photo? That lad wanted to come home. Mom. What? Why was that poor boy homeless in December? Please. He asked if he could come home and you wouldn't let him. I didn't want him to come home. I, I was just... I was just trying to do what was best for Jamie. Me and Phil have built a life here. And when it's me, him and the kids, it just works. But Jamie struggled with the change. He never liked Phil, I don't know why. I was trying to do what was best for him, for all of us. Yeah? Well, we're trying to find who murdered your son. Wild goose chase. What? Nothing, ma'am. Kenny, this better be good news. Well, we've narrowed down the list of possible vehicles matching the tire thread at Lover's Corner. And I think there's a potential lead. Don't tell me, the lads who found the body. Not quite. Paris! Don't worry, I just want to ask a few questions. Why are they taking your car? How did you find out about Lover's Corner? From the teenagers at the fairground. What? What they tell you about the party up there. And you've been there recently. I'm just trying to work out why. I haven't been there. Are you sure about that? You drive a Toyota Corolla. Yeah. Well, has it gone missing recently? Has it? Hmm. Do you lend it to anyone? No. It's just that we found tyre tracks at Lover's Corner that match your car. So, how did they get there? I don't know. Well, it's strange that, isn't it? Your car being very near to where Jamie died. And we've been unable to find anyone at the fairground who remembers seeing you Tuesday morning. I've never been to Lover's Corner. Yet your car was there. Mum? What is it you're not telling us, Mr. Kirk? Hmm? You have a little think about that. Harris back. 
They're keeping him in. Why are you not there? You should, I don't know, put a good word in for him or something. What will that do? You don't think he did it, do you? Look, Geordie, I like Harris, really I do, but he's with the police, they've got his car. It doesn't look good, does it? Geordie? Mum, they finished the search on Harris Kirk's car. Yeah, well, tell me they found something. Well, it hasn't been clean since it rolled off the assembly line, but they did find Jamie's DNA on the steering wheel. Okay, so the lad drove his car now and again. Doesn't let Harris off the hook, now does it? Mum, CCTV from the garage at Broadwell Road. Jamie driving Harris's car at 22.04 on Sunday evening. Is there a passenger? Yeah, it's not clear enough to tell. Mum, desk sergeant says Jodie Pevins is here to see you. She says it's important. You wasn't in your caravan Monday night or Tuesday morning. I was. Well, Jodie Pevensey has just told us you were with her all night. She said the pair of you were in a hotel down the road. You were together all night and you returned to the fairground at noon. Is that true? Is that true? Yeah, I was. But Jamie had gone by the time I got back. I didn't lie about that. Why didn't you tell us about the relationship before? Jodie doesn't want people knowing. You'd rather have a murder charge and have Bobby Pevensey know you're seeing his daughter? It's not him. It's her mum. She's got it in for me. Oh, good enough to man the Dodgers, but not good enough for a princess. I love her. Yeah, well, I think you've proved that, Mr Kirk. Let him go. The DNA test came back on the accreted deposits on the back of the crucifix. I ran it against the DNA database. It's not conclusive. It's a mixed profile. But there are striking similarities to a name in the system. Convictions for possession, car theft, assault. Mrs. Helford. <laughs> Caught me. Can we have a word? Uh, do you want me to fetch George? Oh, no, you'll do just fine, love. No, uh, we just wondered if you recognised this. We bought one just like it for my son for his 18th. Can I take it out of the bag? No, oh, I'm sorry, Pet. It's evidence. So where did you get it? We found it. On Jamie Thorne. Mum? Just stop out. I'll be over at Sally's. All right, love. Take your phone and don't be late back. Uh, I'm sorry. What are you saying? Well, we believe this to be your Brendan's. It has his DNA on it. But... But you found it on Jamie's body. Hmm. Any idea how he came to have hold of it? So may we talk to your son? Is he in? But Brendan wouldn't have anything to do with this. No, just to eliminate him from our inquiries. I take it you've read his file? I have, love. He's easily led. He just fell in with a bad crowd, that's all. Do you know where we might find your son? He moved out a while back. Um, last time he called about a month ago, he was in London. Can I get an address? He's never in the same place for very long, so. Well, whatever you've got, love. Excuse me. Kenny. Right, well, thanks, Mrs. Halford. We will need that address. Jamie's mobile. Someone's just turned it back on. Sherwood Road? Where? The 
the corner of Thropton Street and Sherwood Road. Thropton. Come on, we're looking for anyone resembling Brendan Halford. Brendan Halford? Yeah, well, you don't believe what his man said just now, do you? Is that Thropton? Thropton? Kenny, we're here at Thropton. He says they're on the move back of Thropton. What? Court Street. And the front. I, Vera Stanhope. Well, if it isn't Mr. Hashtag. Where'd you get it? What? The phone. You said you got it on eBay. I found it. Tell her where you found it. Only 20 quid. I mean, Rich split it. Did you take anything else? Just the phone and the wallet. I don't suppose you took a backup before you wiped the phone? No, I didn't think. Well, that lad might have taken a photo of his killer. It was Rich's idea. Did you know Jamie? No. But I saw him a few nights before. Where did you see him? Lover's Corner. On Sunday night, me and Rich were up there. What time? About 10, 11. He arrived in this old car and went wandering into the woods. Was he on his own? Yeah. Yeah, did you talk to him? No. We shouted out, but he just ignored us. Bit of a weirdo, to be honest. And definitely Sunday night? Not Monday. Sunday. Why didn't he tell us before? Promise Rich I wouldn't. He said never help the police. Who's upstairs? No one. Visiting your mate Sally. Right. Charge him with obstruction of justice. What, are you joking? How do you know Mr. Hashtag then? He's a bright catch. No wonder you kept him quiet. You and him go up the lover's corner together. Not my scene. Hmm. What about Jamie Thorne? Definitely not his scene. Did your brother and Jamie get on? They never met. What? Brendan already moved out by then. Do you keep in contact with him? He's down in London. He don't really keep in touch. I bet your parents miss him. My parents like to talk about love and forgiveness, but let's just say when it comes to Brendan, they struggle to apply it. Where were you Tuesday morning? With my mum. And not leaflets.
Ma'am, a uniform have completed the search of the fairground. Sockers haven't found any DNA on any of the tools, then. Did you show Brendan Halford's mugshot about? No. no one can place him. There's no evidence he was in Jamie's caravan. We checked for prints. Okay. You can tell Mr. Pevensey he can reopen. Will do. See you in the morning, then. Right. Whatever it is, Mark, leave it till tomorrow. I've just got the transcript of my evidence. No, oh, you did well. Do you think, well, are they going to say it was my fault? No, why are they going to say that? Because I left her. Now listen, this is going to sound hard-hearted, but it's not meant to be. It was Bethany's decision to be alone with a person she thought was a bereaved relative. Not yours, hers. That's unambiguous. Now, that's not to say I blame her, because the only person to blame for her death is the man who killed her. And that's the truth of what happened, isn't it? She told you to leave. I suppose so. It's... Well... It's just, I can't help thinking, what if I'd stayed? Well, then I'd be two good officers down instead of one, wouldn't I? Then where would I be? Hmm. Now go home, Mark. Good night. Was it? Do you sleep in them clothes? Oh. Charlie made me sleep on the sofa. I'm not supposed to drink because she can't. Why so early? Look, we've got this all wrong. Look, there's some mints in there. Wrong how? The paint analysis on the head wound came back. Have a look. As commonly seen on garden tools. Now that got me thinking. That lad, Mr. Hashtag. He said he saw Jamie up at Lover's Corner on Sunday night, right? Mm -hmm. So why was Jamie up at Lover's Corner on his own on Sunday and then ended up there again on Tuesday morning? I think he was looking for something. Something we missed. Now, that upturned earth by the caves. What if that wasn't the killer trying to bury Jamie, but Jamie wanting to dig something up? There's nothing. We'll keep digging.
I'm going to do my back in. Aiden, get out of the hole. It's a young adult male. I placed him at late teens, early twenties. How long has he been there? Twelve to fourteen months, best guess. Dogs haven't found anything unless you want to widen the search. No. Mm. Is there anything to suggest that anyone's tried to dig this up before? Well, the topsoil was loose. I think Jamie came up here to find this grave. He found it and intended to dig it up. But somebody stopped him. Mm. Marcus. It's Brendan Hailford. Brendan didn't really move out. He just stopped coming home. He's hardly ever here. Sometimes we won't see him for a week, maybe longer. Are you sure it's him? Well, we've yet to make a formal identification, but his wallet was found at the site. But, Mum, you said you spoke to him. Yeah, and we have to ask why you told us that. You were implying that Brendan had something to do with Jamie's murder. Couldn't have you thinking that. Oh, God, I feel sick. How long has the body been there? I think just over a year. And Jamie and Brendan didn't know each other. No. Brendan left before Jamie stayed here. Do you know of any connection between Brendan and the Pevensey Fairground? Do you think they had something to do with this? Not necessarily, no. I'm just trying to establish if there was a connection between Brendan and Jamie. What about you, pet? Pevensey's daughter is about the same age as you? Hmm? No. I don't hang out with Fairground girls. So when did you last hear from him? I don't remember. Last summer. June, I think. Right. You don't remember? It was April 12th last year. You told him that it was an embarrassment and Brendan decided he'd had enough. He was leaving. April then. It was April. Low template DNA results will take a day to come back. I ran the dental records and I have a reliable match. These are definitely the remains of Brendan Halford. Any connection between the two murders? Also wrapped up in black plastic bin bags, mm -hmm. same as Jamie Thorne, and cause of death was also a fatal blow to the back of the skull. Same as Jamie Thorne. But this one has a depressed fracture. Someone hit him with considerable force, enough to cause fractures toward the front of the skull. So our killer has one hell of a backhand. Yeah. spoke to their son in over a year can't give us the names of any of his friends or account for his whereabouts we know Brendan had a fractious relationship with his dad and in the last week we found the bodies of Brendan and the lad who stayed with him at Christmas plus Brendan's crucifix was found on Jamie's body how did that get there you're not going to eat that. Huh? 
Hey, come down. It wasn't exactly the same, though, was he? I mean, maybe Brendan pushed his dad too far. Yeah, but how far would you have to push him to do that, your own son? Ask me in another 18 years. <laughs> so what couldn't wait? Well, there was an allegation made against George Halford. Cheers. They moved to Collington Parish uh, last year. But in 2012, when they were in Sunderland, he was questioned over the alleged sexual assault of a 14-year-old boy named Patrick McKellard. Was this pursued? No, it's marked up as a NFA by a DS Web. He's pretty emphatic that uh, it was vexatious. There were big inaccuracies in the boy's account, and the allegations dropped pretty swiftly. Still, that's a big thing for a kid to make up. Well, Webb's impression was that the kid's father was causing trouble. Well, whichever it was. I can't ignore it. This phone's going straight to voicemail. Uh, it's me. Can you call me as soon as you get this? Police are here. They're looking for you. He went out about an hour ago. He can't have gone far. Is this about Brendan? Not quite, Pat. We need to ask you both some questions. About Patrick McKellard? Not yet, should we? Well, I'd rather you didn't. The whole thing nearly ruined our lives. Do you want to tell us what happened? George was just trying to help the lad. We knew his family. They came to the church. The father had a few problems. Always down the pub. Patrick had come home from school sometimes, found himself locked out. He'd come to the church. On a few occasions, George brought him home, you know, made sure he was all right, and his parents got back. And his dad got the wrong end of the stick, started accusing George of ulterior motives. Then his dad went to the police. Anyway, when the detective questioned Patrick, he broke down, said nothing had happened, was thrown out. Did Jamie know about this, about Patrick? We came here to get away from it. Look, I'm sorry, love, but I've got two dead lads, both with links to this household. And now this allegation has surfaced, erroneous or not, I need to be sure. What's this? It's a warrant to search your home, Aiden. Sorry, love, it's just a line of inquiry. Now, could you try calling him again, please? Found it in the wheelie bin. Well, open it up. <laughs> Male clothes. Deodorant. Phone charger. Playing cards. Any ID? That's not ours. Could that be Jamie Thorne's? Yep. Okay, where? Thanks. We've got a sight of our vicar. Back these up.
Bobby Pevensey. Yes, mate, how can I help? I've lost my son. Right, well, keep calm. It happens all the time. We'll find him. First thing we can do is make an announcement over the Tannio City. Give us a description or a name. Is that meant to be some kind of joke? I'm sorry? I know you. Jamie spoke about you. He looked up to you. He told me he didn't tolerate having druggies on your side. You sometimes took the law into your own hands. I think he was exaggerating. My son's name was Brendan. 22. Six foot one. Spoke with a slight stammer. Call the police. They found his body this morning. There wasn't enough of him left for me to identify. Did you know him? I'm sorry, mate, no. Tell me what happened to my son. I don't know. He used to hang around here, him and his druggy mates. <laughs> you need to steady down now, mate, okay? What did you do to him? <laughs> what did you do to my son? Harris! Harris, it's my dad. I need you to come and sort him out. Listen, sir, I'm sorry for your loss. I really am. But you've got the wrong man, and I really need you to calm down now. I want you to tell me what happened to my son. Dad. Just go home. You've got the wrong man. We'll do something then. Whoa! Excuse me! Bobby, no! Oh, hey, I need you to stay calm. I am calm. Mr. Hailford? Is he all right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just walk away, Mr. Mr. Pevensey. Mr. Hailford? Come on, this way. What were you doing at the fairground? Hmm? I wanted to ask about Brendan. Not like you're trying to start a fight. I'm not wanting to press charges. Well, that's just as well. You've got two witnesses sat here, saw you throw the first punch. You said you were looking at the Pevensies. I just wanted to ask that fairground owner whether he knew Brendan. And did he? The hold all we found in your bin. Any idea who that belongs to? Hold all? Mm. What hold all? We found a bag at your vicarage that we believe contains Jamie's belongings. How did that get there? Mm. I've no idea what you're talking about. You think I had something to do with what happened to Jamie? Jamie. And I wouldn't ever hurt my own son. I've spent the last year praying for Brendan to come home. Just. And he's been lying there all this time. On his own. Hold all in your bin, George. Who does it belong to? Like I said, I don't know. I think I'd like to speak to my solicitor now, please. Sleep well? I don't even know why I'm still here. Uh, you tried to break your vicar's nose. Well, if a man can't take a punch, he shouldn't throw one. Come on, you're free to go. It's 
been a while since Morph collected me from the cells. <laughs> Whoever said romance is dead? <laughs> Sorry, love. Just saw Red, you know. It's all right. Keen on getting us for something. Had a call? Uh, yes. Thanks for coming in, love. Do you want to come up? You made any arrests yet? Oh, well, it's, it's ongoing. We found Jamie's fingerprints on these items. Do you recognize any of them at all? I bought these for him for his last birthday. Before he left home. When he was little, he used to hate having his injections. So I used to read to him. Take his mind off it. Where did you find all this? I'm sorry, love. I can't tell you that yet, but I'll make sure all his belongings are returned to you. We did find this in his wallet. Jamie shared with Harris Kirk. Did you find any insulin medication in there? Um. Oh, yeah. yeah, um. Two boxes in the bathroom. Yeah, did you ask Harris about that? He said they were his. Yeah, but did you check? Did you check? Love. Harris Kirk has no need for insulin. It was Jamie's. Now, why would that lad pack his bag without the one thing he desperately needed? Kirk packed that bag to make it look like Jamie had left. Now, where till you say this? I checked the names of boys in Brendan's year at school. One name stands out. Brendan went to school with Harris Kirk? But Jody gave Harris an alibi. Right, check out the caravan. Back so soon, eh? We're looking for Harris. We need to talk to him and your daughter. Well, Harris should be over there packing up his right. Why do you need to speak to my daughter? Excuse Look me. The hell is no one, ma'am. It's empty. All his gear's gone. You seen Geordie? Uh, yeah, her and Harris went to the cash and carry earlier. Why? Their stuff's gone. Perhaps through the house. Right. I want an all court Jodie Pevensey and Harris Kirk. I want them found. Stupid, no. I haven't done anything. Really? Now, 
when we showed you a photo of Brendan Halford, you denied ever having seen him before. Yeah. Only according to your old secondary school in Sunderland, you and he were in the same class. School? Hmm. That was like eight years ago. I don't remember everyone I went to school with. But how did he end up here? I don't want to look at that. Did you bury Brendan here? No, I had nothing to do with this. Why were you both running away? I don't know. We just wanted to be together. I'm sick of my mum trying to break us up. Was that the only reason? Yeah. Does Harris love you? Yeah, of course he does. So you don't have any secrets? No. None. Good. So let's talk about what happened to your old bunkmate, Jamie Thorne. I told you I don't know anything about that. Jodie told you where I was. Oh, my mistake, pet, so she did. Sorry. So let's go back to Brendan. Here's what I think happened. 12th of April last year, Brendan storms out of his home and lo and behold, he turns up at the fun fair and your paths crossed. No. And on that same evening, 12th of April, you were admitted to Newcastle A&E with a broken arm. Yeah, so? How'd you break your arm? I fell over at the fairground. Mm. Only funnily enough, around about the same time, Brendan had his head caved in. So did the pair of you have a fight? He turns up at the fairground. You think he's going to do your caravan over and you whacked him one? No. So did you whack him a bit too hard? You killed him? No. You don't remember when Harris broke his arm? Well, yeah, of course I do. And what did he say happened? Uh, I can't remember. I think he said him and his mate were messing about on a ride and they fell off. That mate? Was it him? You took him up the lover's corner and you buried him. And what about Jodie? Was she in on all this with you? No. She had nothing to do with any of it. Nothing to do with what, Pet? Hello? I've got my daughter, Jodie Pevensey. I want to see her. I need to speak to her now, please. Brendan did come to the fair, but it wasn't like you said. I'd not seen him since school. We had a few beers, a bit of a smoke. He asked if he could stay at mine. Said he had a running with his old man or something. And he, uh, he started climbing up one of the rides. I climbed up after him. It was raining and slippery in it. He fell first. Took me down with him. High at the grass, broke my arm. Brendan at the rides platform. He wasn't moving. didn't you shout for help? You weren't responsible for what happened. Why cover it up? Did someone pressure you? No, I just... I wasn't thinking. I just I panicked. I thought no one had seen me with him, so I just... I put his body in my car. 
drove him up to Lover's Corner and buried him there. And on Sunday, did you tell Jamie all this? He came into the caravan. I'd had a few. He started asking about the crucifix I had hanging above my bed. It wasn't mine, it was Brendan's. I took it off his body, not to steal it, just, I don't know, to remember him. And Jamie said how he wanted one for himself. So I gave it to him. And he was, he was so pleased. And then it all just started pouring out. I told him everything. Oh. And then what? You sobered up and realised you shouldn't have told him anything. <laughs> Jamie didn't deserve any of this. Well, we can agree on that, at least. That's just one thing bothers me about all this. Ben Brendan died, and I believe you about that. You carried his body to your car. You drove up to Lover's Corner and you buried him. Is that right? How'd you do all that with a broken arm? I need to call you back in. You all right? Oh, thank God. Hey. Do you know about Harris? Oh, I think he's still in there. Mr. Pevensey! I'm sorry, love. When Harris broke his arm last April, how did he get to hospital? Hang on, why are you asking that? Did you drive him, love? No. Then who did? Well, he knocked on our door, said he'd had an accident, so Morven drove him in. And Tuesday morning. Did you see your wife on Tuesday morning? I was in the side office. She was around. Did you see her? Mrs. Pevensey? You and Harris, oh, you share quite the secret, don't you? We'd like to ask you some questions. About? I think you'd better talk to them, love. After you, pet. We know Harris had an accomplice the night Brendan died. Now, if it wasn't you, who was it? Or have we got this all wrong? And Harris really is the world's best one-armed grave digger. I took Harris to the hospital that night. I saw. Didn't see Brendan's body lying around anywhere? No. Did Harris tell you anything? Look, if you don't start talking soon, pet, I'm going to take your lovely fairground apart piece by piece and then your house and then your car until I find something. And then I'm going to bring your daughter back in and then your husband. And I won't stop until I can tell Reverend Halford and Grace Marsh what happened to their lads. No? All right. The night that Brendan died, Harris came to see me. He was a mess. And he said that, that him and his mate had been climbing the tower drop. So I followed him. And 
There was this body covered in blood. I knew that there was nothing we could do for him. Harris swore that it was an accident. But I knew what it looked like. And what it could do for our reputation. Mm. The fairgrounds finances a year ago were in a pretty sorry state. So I completely understand why you wouldn't want news of a fatal accident getting out to scupper things further. So instead of calling an ambulance or the police, you wrapped this lad's body in bin bags and slung him in an unmarked grave in the middle of nowhere, then came back as if nothing had happened. No, it wasn't like that. Roll up, roll up. The show must go on. And it did. So jump to a year later. Mm. When poor young Jamie finds out what happened to Brendan. Because Harris can't keep his mouth shut. Am I right? He came to the office to tell us what Harris had said. Jamie said that he had to do the right thing. He had to tell the police. That reverend small act of kindness in giving this lad shelter over Christmas. So Jamie felt he owed him. So I said I'd help him. I asked Jamie to... to show me where Harris had said that the body was. Even though you knew. When I got there, I realised what it all looked like. That I'd... I'd buried that lad. And nobody would forgive me for that. Well, certainly not the lad's family. So instead of handing Jamie the shovel, you hit him over the head with it. <laughs> It just happened. Twice. You hit him twice. It wasn't planned. I didn't think about so it. So how come you had the bin bags and the gaffer tape with your pet? Hmm? Oh, I can see now why you didn't want Harris with your daughter. He knew what you'd done. Only a matter of time before he blabbed it to her and all. But you know what? Harris was willing to take the blame for Jamie's murder. Just so the love of his life wouldn't lose her man. Bobby always says that the two most important things are the business and our family. All I was doing was trying to protect them both. Oh, well, that's very noble. Is that what you were doing when you put Jamie's bag in Reverend Halford's bin? Charger. Morgan Pemberton, you're under arrest for the murder of Jamie Thorne and for conspiring to conceal the death of Brendan Halford. Fertig sein und beten ist ein Quest. 
coroner's ruled unlawful killing. And were there comments? Will we be taking learnings from this? The only comment was they're giving her the bravery award. Now that is right. They don't often get it right, but that is right. Yeah, I'd say so. Worth raising a glass to, isn't it? Hey, what do we reckon? Yeah, that's a good idea. You lot go down, I'll finish up here, and um, you are. Uh, Aidan, give me a tenner. Yeah, stick this behind the bar. <laughs> go on. Oh, come on. Come down yourself. Well, hands up all those who want the boss down the pub with them. Go on. First round on the gaffer, eh? <laughs> Dragon. Mm. And I thought, well, she might be an antisocial cow, but no one deserves to miss out on prawn toast. You won then, you've twisted me arm. Hand that mug over. Go on. Get that down, you. Yeah. I won't tell you, missus. <laughs> 